40. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the premiere. They're always a lot of fun. Today we're doing a round robin. We're pitting a lot of the structure decks against each other, uh, 11 through 20 this time. Some of them you'll see in the video tomorrow, some were discussed in part three. We'll, we'll see how uh, Pegasus has made these structure decks evolve. First up, we're going to have Surge of Radiance versus Curse of Darkness. Light versus dark right off the bat. But joining us in the chat today. How you two doing?
I'm probably going to be cheering on Warrior's Strike and Spellcaster's Command personally. Uh, those were decks that, that I've played around with as well. Spellcaster's Command, uh, I, I think, was a very nice upgrade. But yeah, it, it is it is definitely the era of of copies just not existing anymore. It's so rare to see any of the the structure decks at this point with like two field spells. And like, you'll see like maybe two of the same monster. But at this point, like, they kind of figured out like, oh, hey, if we, uh, <laughs> if we just maybe not fill them completely out, they'll buy, they'll buy a second copy. Don't worry, I'll be changing the music shortly. It's It's been a week for me, so I needed a little bit of piano to relax, but, you know. Alright. Alright, we, we in serious mode now. Let's, let's, let's turn on serious mode music. Alright, first, first round is going to be Surge of Radiance versus Curse of Darkness. Mayhem is definitely going to do a whole lot better. Uh, I, I feel like Machine Revolt really relied on getting Ultimate Offering to even be remotely competitive, whereas Machina Mayhem can drop their boss monster on the field without warning. So We're starting off with a Nobleman of Cross Out, which is going to hit Stealth Bird. Surge of Radiance is going to go on an early offensive for 3,000 damage, but 16k of that is going to get reflected. Mm. 
Mist Arch means gonna hit the field. It won't be sticking around very long, but it does uh, do a little bit of damage. Curse of Darkness equips the Shining Angel with Megamorph to weaken its attack. Uh, interestingly enough, they go even, and that brings Shining Angel right back on up, and now its attack points have doubled because we fell behind. So now Curse of Darkness has to deal with a very strong NB. Oh, you got a Heavy Storm, their own, their own card. All right. Guardian Angel Joan is going to hit the field, as is the Soul of Purity and Light. Curse of Darkness is going to get back. Dimension Wall, regain 900 life points and strike in for 2,000. Does Curse of Darkness... Curse of Darkness will be sticking around. They have a Spirit Reaper, so they get to stall. Our second Heavy Storm, and that's going to be huge. Dark Mirror Force got hit. Dark Mirror Force. The really, really niche card. <laughs> Great if you can get it off, but good luck. Uh, Curse of Darkness is going to stall for a bit with Nightmare Steel Cage. Uh, we'll see if this was necessary, because right now they have nothing that can get past the Spirit Reaper. They're going to tribute into Lich Lord. They're gonna go punch out Soul of Purity and Light. We'll see if it was worth sacrificing the Spirit Reaper. Terraforming is gonna grab another Sanctuary from the sky. Magic Cylinder is gonna keep the Lich Lord around for another turn. Lich Lord goes into defense. Royal Knight hits the field. They're gonna regain 1200. Joan is gonna regain another 1600. It's looking really bad for Curse of Darkness, folks. Curse of Darkness is gonna go, go punch in, but uh... Unless that face down is something really fierce, I think this is going to be it for Curse of Darkness in round one. Uh, yes, I am going to do a video on this one, and I will be using this footage here, so... Alright, Surge of Radiance is going to take round one. Can Curse of Darkness bring it back? Honestly, I think doubtful. I I don't have high hopes for Curse of Darkness. It is a very oddly constructed burn deck. And uh, Curse of Darkness is gonna start off by losing, I think I saw a Dimension Wall and Deck Devastation. Really unfortunate. Prometheus, the King of Shadows, will hit the field. His effect will not trigger because it only triggers on a normal summon. Surge of Radiance is going to use the Aegis of Gaia. If that card leaves the field, they will take 3,000 damage, but for now, they have gained 3,000 life points. Air Knight Parshath has hit the field. He can't attack right now due to the Nightmare Steel Cage.
Cage is gone. We'll see if it amounted to anything. Axe Dragonute is gonna hit the field. Air Knight Parshath is gonna get taken out before that offensive ever starts. Axe Dragonute will the defense mode due to its mandatory effect, but Gallon Duo is going to wall off that offensive. Air Knight Parshath is gonna get revived. And equipped with the Cestus of Dagla. The, the Cestus of Dagla. It's going to pierce for 1200. Going to gain 1200 and draw a card. Ooh, that heavy storm wipes the entire field. And now, uh, Curse of Darkness is actually in the driver's seat. But that only lasts for so long, because Meltiel just comes back in and punches out Prometheus. Spirit Reaper is brought to bear to stall once again. Can Surge of Radiance find an out? Axe Dragonute is going to show back up again. Negate Attack is going to stop it cold. And they're going to gain a thousand life points thanks to Meltiel uh, given, given a thousand for the counter trap. Lightning Vortex is going to hit. That's going to be huge for Surge of Radiance. We're going to get in for some big damage. Does Curse of Darkness have an out? They do have Pot of Avarice. This could help rescue them. And they are bricked by the looks of it. Joan is going to hit the field again. Is that game? That is game. Surge of Radiance is going to take it two to zero. Next is going to be a Dragon v Dragon matchup with Dragoonities versus Rise of the Dragon Lords. I'm not the Surge of Radiance AI. Even though I do like my like that. Uh, this is Surge's first time in a tournament, uh, that, that I've run at least. If Sartorius didn't have, uh, Arcana, I could see him... I could see him. Oh, don't worry, Dogma, I was joking right along with you. Thought it would be more entertaining to play, lean into the joke. Alright, Dragonlord's starting off by dropping a Mausoleum of the Emperor on the field. This could be used against them. But they're gonna start off by dropping Guardian Angel Joan on the field. The Dragonlord deck. That's right, folks. Bet you didn't know the Guardian Angel Zone is a Dragon Lord. Snipe Hunter is going to hit the field. They... Hmm. They throw Morphing Jar. All the... 
This AI, this AI strats are very advanced. We're gonna jump soul exchange to blow up the back row. They hit relieve monster, which is not the greatest trap card of all time, but Dragon Lords is gonna get in for a little bit of damage. Garuda is called to the field. Legacy of Yadagarasu is played for that one extra card. Snipe Hunter is going to get punched out. Morphing Jar is going to get flipped face up. The Creator is sent to the graveyard. Foolish Barrel is going to be used. Sending Twin Headed Behemoth. Dragon Lords is going to deal themselves 2,000 more damage to drop Tyrant Dragon on the field. That's going to hurt. Tyrant Dragon is going to attack twice. Mass Dragon is going to get triggered. Bring out another Twin-Headed Behemoth, which Joan will punch out. 1,500 attack for Dragon Lords. And then Morphing Jar is going to get in for a mighty 700. Stamping Destruction is going to hit the Mausoleum. Though I think really the damage has already been done. Monster Reincarnation is going to be used to get back Garuda the Wind Spirit. Not really sure what the master plan is here other than to maybe stall. That's what it's looking like. I was thinking maybe a tribute would happen, but no. They had to go punch out that Morphing Jar. We'll see if those back rows can keep them safe. Kaiser Seahorse dropped onto the field. Bottomless Trap Hole takes care of it. Flying Kamakiri is destroyed. Its effect triggers. And it's gonna bring out Hunter Owl, who's actually going to be pretty spicy, but unfortunately not spicy enough. Hunter Owl could perform a lock if uh, these decks were allowed to have duplicates. Ooh, that is going to be an Icarus attack targeting the Draining Shield and Joan. Uh, in case you're wondering why Tyrant Dragon was not targeted, Tyrant Dragon can negate the effects of trap cards that target him. And Dragon Lords is going to take round one against the Dragoonities. In a pretty convincing matchup, I'd say. Dragoonity Allegiance, spin this back. Dragoonity starting off with Dragon Mastery and a card destruction. Depending on what they pitch to the grave, this could be pretty big for them. Uh, instead, it's going to be an attack mode mass dragon, and uh, dragon lords are going to vortex it. That could potentially kill any momentum the dragoonities have. Later, Finton. Twin headed behemoth is going to hit the field also in an attack mode, even though there's like really no hope. Majestic Mech Goryu is going to get revived. As is a masked dragon, which the Dragoonity's really gonna need to stall. Kaiser Seahorse will punch out the 
twin-headed behemoth. It is gonna come back. Oh, I know. It, it's so sad, Yugi. The, the deck was just hamstrung by no... by no synchros at all. Uh, Leviton is going to equip a Mass Dragon. I don't think that's going to actually benefit him really at all. I might be wrong, but I don't think so. Other than the fact that if it dies, it'll get to summon the Mass Dragon back. Like. Well, Dragoon the Allegiance has seemed to have uh, brought control back. Uh, Giant Shrewdate is going to be used, I'm gonna guess... Oh? Snipe Hunter could get... Could out the Leviton. Snipe Hunter is going to fail on the first attempt to out Leviton. But will not fail the second. Miss Valley Falcon is gonna go punch out Snipe Hunter. A troublesome little fiend. Dragon Lords have no choice but to go into defense with Mass Dragon. Mass Dragon is gonna call out a twin headed behemoth. Twin-headed behemoth is back. Dragon Lords, I think they need a top deck like a mausoleum here to kind of spin it back. And that Kaiser Seahorse is out of here, gone to another dimension. Primus Pilus is going to equip uh, a Brandestock from the deck. That is going to allow it to attack twice. That'll be some major damage for the Dragoonides. They are now back in this. And if Rise of the Dragon Lords does not get an out, they don't get an out. That is going to be Dragoonides taking round two. The score is tied one to one. Round three, hype! Let's see who takes it. Dragoonity Ducks is going to be hitting the field first for the United We Stand. This is going to make him quite the beat stick, and Spear Creighton has no target. Dragon Lords are bricked. And Dragoonities only keep getting stronger right now. Call the Haunted for Spear Creighton. Do we got something? Ooh, a brain control. Is that going to be a double tribute? It is for Dark Blaze Dragon. Uh, 
Um, yeah. Ooh, Big Bang Shot is going to make the Dark Blaze Dragon still not all that spicy at the end of the day. It is going to inflict some really strong damage, though, just due to the its own effect. And there's Arm Dragon level 5. And Arm Dragon level 5 is going to say goodbye, Dark Blades Dragon. Uh, however... Spear Cretan is going to use that effect. To bring back Dark Blaze Dragon stronger than ever, and there it goes. Dragoonities will take it. Alright, next is going to be the Merrick Structure Deck versus Dark Emperor. I should have set the AI to be Merrick. I'll do that for the future duels. We got a dimensional fissure hitting right away, which is going to immediately counter the coffin seller. Uh, we have a very stupid chain by the AI where Book of Moon got chained to Nightmare Wheel. Um, well, actually, that does still affect them. They just can't get out of defense mode. And they take 500 damage and then they're gonna run it over with the tomato anyway. An interesting play by Merrick. There's Gravekeeper's Chief. Uh, Lightning Vortex is going to hit immediately. Banisher of Radiance is here to make sure everything gets removed from play. And then there's also Macro Cosmos. Hey Joseph, thank you. Glad you've been uh, enjoying them. Uh, glad you enjoyed Walmart. I was pretty proud of that one. Banisher of Radiance is going to come on in and strike. Uh, this looks to be round one to Dark Emperor.
see how it goes. Another dimensional fissure opener by the Dark Emperor deck. Necro Valley is going to be used, even though it's going to be largely irrelevant versus this deck. Oh no, the fate of the world depends on it. Go, Dark Emperor. Caius is going to remove Necro Valley from the game. Visor Death is going to hit the field. Now it's going to target Caius and it can't be destroyed and after three turns, it'll blow up and kill Caius. But for now, Merrick's going to be taking a lot of damage. So for now, until it blows up Caius, it cannot be destroyed by battle. Samsara Kaiser is going to come in, and they're going to all walk into a mirror forest, and Visor Deaths was pointless. DD Survivor is going to survive. Like he do. Allure of Darkness is going to trigger. Necro Valley on the field. Gravekeeper's Visionary. Oh, oh, well, there goes all of Merrick's cards again. And guess who's coming back? It's this guy. Mystical Space Typhoon is going to target Book of Moon. But... Exiled Force and DD Survivor are going to go in for the lethal against Merrick's deck. Dark Emperor, the S-tier deck of 11 through 20, starting off promising. That's going to be two for Dark Emperor and zero for Merrick. I guess the world is safe for now, at least until the next round of the Round Robin Tournament. Next up is going to be Zombie World versus Machina Mayhem. Yeah, we are doing a round robin tournament, Leon, so no decks can get eliminated. They'll play all nine rounds, and we'll see who has the most wins and losses at the end of it all. Uh, and there we're gonna see... We're gonna see Machina Mayhem drop their boss monster on the field immediately. Red Eyes Zombie Dragon is gonna hit the field. Take out Green Gadget. Machina Armor Unit is going to replace Green Gadget with Kinetic Soldier. Curious to see what the plans with Zombie Dragon are because uh, Machina Fortress is just gonna run you over. Should have kept Spirit Reaper. Twenty six fifty is gonna get thrown into Zombie World. Z 
zombies really can only get super strong if uh, if they draw Zombie World. And sad story, they only got one of those. Plague Wolf blows itself up. The heavy mech support platform is here. They are going in. And that is gonna be lethal. Round one is going to go to Machina Mayhem. How does Kaiba feel about Machina Force being stronger than Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon? I, I guess if he just like looks at the number and doesn't look at the card, he'd probably be upset. But I think if he realizes that like you, you can't use Polymerization, you have to get all four onto the field, I think he'd feel a little better about it. Oh, this deck's going to play this Machina Force monster like two times a year with the summoning condition. Standard defensive opener from Machina Mayhem. Machina Mayhem really is improved Machine's Revolt in a lot of ways. Like, for realsies. Prohibition is gonna drop on Zombie Master. I don't know if Zombie World has a second copy of Zombie Master in their deck as is. Shrink is gonna hit the Royal Keeper, that is gonna keep momentum squarely on Machina Mayhem's side with their Metal Morph Proto Cyber Dragon. Pyramid Turtle is gonna hit the field. It's going to intentionally ram to summon out a Red Eye Zombie Dragon. It's going to try to crash, it's going to hit compulsory, and that's going to be the end of that. Machina Soldier is going to come out, but can't fire off the effect. Metal Morph. Cyber Dragon punches out Death Lakuda. Machina Soldier gets in for a little bit of damage. Plague Wolf is gonna show up for a revenge run. That's gonna be a D prison. Uh, to answer your question, Maxwell, I always run them out of the box. Uh, because there's a lot of opinions on how someone can optimize a deck. Everyone's going to like feel certain cards work better than others. So I just prefer to rate them how Konami made them. And then rather than like any arguments about, you know, what's the best way to optimize the deck, we can all just all point and laugh at Konami for being like, you put what in the deck? You put Tower of Babel? Why? Machina Mayhem is going to take round two. That is going to be a clean 2-0. We're moving right along in this tournament, and it's going to be Spellcaster's Command versus Warrior Strike.
Yeah, Pyramid Turtle is such a good recruiter. Like, for real. Vampire Sorcerer starting with the standard defensive opener. That's gonna be an attack into what appears to be a Crystal Seer that's gonna hit a magic cylinder. Nako, the Master of Barriers, is going to appear and use Magician's Circle, but that's gonna bring out a monster on Gemini's side as well. Sakuretsu Armor is going to take out the Magical Marionette. And Gemini Summoner is going to Gemini Summon the Future Samurai. Freed the Matchless General is going to hit the field. I almost feel it was a little pointless for Future Samurai to go for the Gemini effect here. There wasn't really any ammo at the time, but we'll see. They're going to go for an Apprentice Magician. Spellcaster's Command. Setting. Freed is going to go punch into the Apprentice Magician. Old Vindictive is going to get recruited. And, uh, well, they're gonna chill. Old Vindictive is gonna flip up and gonna destroy Freed. Mage Power is going to get equipped to Old Vindictive Magician. I, I don't even know that that was worth it. Skilled Dark Magician is going to get blown up immediately by Future Samurai's effect. Symbols of Duty is going to be used to revive Free, the Matchless General. He's going to negate the Symbols of Duty and just throw them back to the graveyard without destroying himself. And then Birthright is going to bring back Dark Valkyria. What a play by Warrior's Strike! They are just out for blood. The Vindictive Beat Stick. Is this going to be lethal? Yes. Okay. It's gonna be one for Warrior's Strike. Oh, Atticus versus Atticus, you don't say.
Okay, we are back. Sorry about that, guys. All right, let's 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 finish this. Let's see who. Alright, it's gonna be a skilled dark magician start. Warrior Strike gonna start off with the defensive opener. Magician Circle is going to be used. Dark Bribe is going to be chained. I actually think it would have been better for Warrior Strike to let that go through and get their Gemini summoner out, but it really depends on what their hand is looking like. Birthrate is going to be used to call back the Blazewing Butterfly. Supervise will be used. Going to make Future Samurai stronger. Future Samurai will pop the Skilled Dark Magician. Crystal Seer is going to find out which card. Nuzzler? No, they're gonna go for Dark Red Enchanter. Interesting. Giant True Nade is going to send both cards away. Summoner Monk is going to hit the field, is going to use its power to pull. Magical Exemplar. Field Barrier will get ditched. Magical Exemplar could not attack, I think, due to Summoner Monk's effect. They're gonna ditch Magicians Unite for Mako, the Master of Barriers. Dark Red Enchanter will hit the field. Dark Red Enchanter will attack. Supervise will go off, is going to revive a future samurai again. Dark Red Enchanter could be in trouble here. And this could still be in trouble, they could still do it in main phase two. Oh no, they don't have ammo. Normally they could blow up the monster here, but. Uh, any chance of Taya, Alexis, or other girls appearing in the future videos? Maybe. It, it really just depends, like, on how good they sound and if I think I have some funny stuff to write for them. But, like, the problem with the girls, like... Oh, hey, Phoenix Gearfried is on the field. The, the problem I feel the girls run into is they're usually the more down-to-earth characters. And, like, I really love writing the completely batshit crazy characters. Like, Maya is, I think, the closest thing to being eccentric, but, like, I wouldn't even say that she's bad. Phoenix Gearfried is going to summon itself twice. Now if the enemy activates a spell card in his presence, he'll be able to special summon a card from the graveyard. Unleash your power is gonna get chained. Uh, this was probably a bad move. Mystical Space Typhoon chained against Swords of Revealing Light. Interesting that you waited that long. That is one really powerful beast. Five spell counters on the Cerberus. Magical plant. Mandragola is going to start recharging the field. Magical Marionette is here. 
It's going to use its effect to destroy. Uh, Magical Marionette is going to get equipped. Uh, this is game, and it's going to go to round three. Round three, hi! Alright, spellcasters are going to start off with the Magical Citadel of Endemic. Defender the Magical Knight is going to hit the field. It's going to be a Divine Sword Phoenix Blade on Evocator Chevalier. And they're going to walk right into a Magic Cylinder. Ouch. going to be an immediate tribute for Dark Red Enchanter, and... Ooh, that appears to be a problem. Only 2,200 attack points. on card games that aren't dual monsters? Probably not. I mean, I, I won't say never. The The problem is, like, I played only really a little bit of Magic, and I think part of why some people have enjoyed my videos is, like, I have that familiarity with Yu-Gi-Oh! that allows me to write, the you know, some of the jokes I do. And, you know, with, with Magic the Gathering, I mostly played it in summer camp, like, for a very short amount of time, but I played Yu-Gi-Oh! for a very long time, so. I don't think so. But if I feel like I can ever deliver a promising video on any subject, then it's it's pretty much game. Warrior Strike is in a bit of a... Th Ooh, this could be game right here. If they don't have a way to stop this Spellcaster Barrage, this is game. And that's going to be a win for Spellcaster's Command. I'm, I was fine with either result there. I was cheering on both of them. 
So at the end of round one, the winners so far are Surge of Radiance, Dark Emperor, Machina Mayhem, Spellcaster's Command, and Dragoon of the Legion, and we'll be moving on to round two. I am kind of surprised we never saw... I, I think it might have been like when it was released because like I think Yugi maybe only used Breaker in like maybe one or two duels tops and then maybe one in the movie. It's going to be Dragon Lords or Surge of Radiance. Surge of Radiance starting off with no monsters at all. Dragon Lords are going to grab a mausoleum and drop it right on the field. Here comes Tyrant Dragon to start things off. It's going to just be a 2900. Dragon Lords are going to drop another 2,000 life points to summon Guilford the Lightning, the other Dragon Lord of the deck. Negate Attack is going to be used to stop Guilford the Lightning. Once again, Tyrant and Dragon would stop the trap cards. Surge of Radiance is forced to use Mausoleum to set a card. Snipe Hunter fails the first time. Not that time. Divine Wrath is finally going to be used after Snipe Hunter clears out a few cards. Air Knight Parshath is going to be destroyed and Tyrant Dragon punches in for the W. Dragon Lords, take round one.
Uh, we got a Dark Blaze of Dragon. Majestic Mech Goryu going to strike in for quite a bit. Beckoning Light going to be used. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head, Dragon Master. I'd have to go, I'd have to go really look that one up. Uh, is, is Dragon Lord just going to, like, slam dunk Surge of Radiance here? Yeah. Dragon Lords is going to take this round two to nothing. Next is gonna be Curse of Darkness versus the Dark Emperor. Darkness within darkness awaits us, chat. Unga bungal. All right, here we are starting off with giant. Curse of Darkness starting off with Giant Orc, which is going to get Lightning Vortex immediately. Reinforcement of the army is going to call DD Survivor. That's going to be a clean hit for 1800. Curse of Darkness on the defensive. Their Spirit Reaper gets hit by Nobleman of Crossout. Really bad hit for them. Curse of Darkness is... bricked? They do get to live another round. Dimension Wall will actually help ensure they live a little bit longer. Maybe. They're still dead on next turn if they can't draw an out. There's Axe Dragon Oot and goodbye. There's Deck Devastation. Deck Dev will actually kind of keep them alive for one more round. Ah, uh, that better have been a really good card. Chaos Rider Gustav, destroyed by Deck Dev. Ah, uh, but that's game. Dark Emperor takes round one. Curse of Darkness is like, I feel bad for it. It's built very, very strange. And like, Dark Emperor really is extremely well built by comparison. And it just, it just messes with so many decks. Early Magical Mallet for three cards. 
Giant Orc is back, everyone. Ooh, wow. Have they had this set Grand Maju? Uh, yes. Yes, Lexus. This is a base structure with no help. Ectoplasma is going to mess with everyone's plans here. Um, Curse of Darkness heavy storming primarily themselves? Not really sure what that one was about. Spirit Reaper is up. And there's the Caius goodbye Spirit Reaper. Nice knowing you. Zoo jumps up to 2,500, but that gets reflected back with Dimension Wall. The Curse of Darkness special. Curse of Darkness is clearly just upset, guys. That's that's why they heavy stormed their own field. Let's 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 not point it out. I'm sure they feel silly. They meant they they probably meant to set it and they pressed the play button on accident. It happens to the best of us. All right, well, that is going to be uh, Dark Emperor taking Curse of Darkness 2-0. And it's going to be Zombie World versus Dragoonity Legion next. Curse is foiled again. Zombie World really does need more copies of its cards, I entirely agree. But let's see how they do. They're gonna start off with a card of safe return. And they'll open with Zombie World. This should be them at full power and a card destruction. That's gonna toss Leviton into the grave. Uh, they are going to heavily jack up the the armed dragon, but uh, zombies are going to negate it since he was technically targeting a zombie monster. Armed dragon is going to grow up into an armed dragon zombie. Four thousand four hundred damage. That's gotta hurt. Was it the card they needed to stall? No, Spirit Reaper will wall him off for a turn, Arm Dragon will destroy it. Zombie World sets a card. It's not going to be enough to keep the Dragoonities out. Dragoonities take round one.
It's a zombie world with field barrier. This valley falcon is going to attack for 2,000. Bottomless trap hole is going to take out the Garuda. The Sally Falcon punches in for 28. Spell Shattering Arrow is going to be used to destroy the United We Stand, but. Alas. The Unity Legion takes it. Two for Dragoonity. Zero for Zombie World. Now it'll be Spellcaster's Command versus Merit. It would have been interesting if we got like a Dragoonity heart piece. Merrick gonna start out with a Gravekeeper's Assailant, punching right into the Apprentice Magician. It's gonna go for an early Magician of Faith. What kind of spell cards do you have to be dropping? Acid Trap Hole is going to claim the Magician of Faith before she gets her spell card to play with. Skill Dark Magician will get rid of the Assailant. Ooh, this is going to be a Tomato Creature Swap. The Spell Shield Type 8 is going to come to the rescue.
Legendary Fiend grows stronger. Oh, whoopsie. Okay. Tsukiyomi is going to turn Legendary Fiend face down. Spy summoned in attack mode. No flip effect today. Uh, this match is also invalid. I threw them against the wrong spellcaster deck. Alright, so, well and truly, nothing was missed, because this, this match is just going to be invalid. Uh, this, this was the wrong structure deck. There's Spellcaster's Command and Spellcaster's Judgment. I accidentally picked Judgment. Here we go for real, dude. Spellcasters with an empty open. Necro Valley hits the field. Spear Soldier up first. Gonna run into a magic cylinder. Skull Invitation will be used. Fissure is going to destroy the Spear Soldier and inflict 300 damage to both. Uh, I suspect they're similar in, in names just because they were similar in themes. A certain amount of time passed and they were like, well, how can we do spellcasters this time? Well, spell counters. How do we say that, though? I don't know. Spellcasters come in and set a judgment. Got it. Print. Assailant and Descendant getting in for some big damage. Book of Moon being targeted. It's going to be used. That's going to be round one going to Merrick. Officially this time.
here we go. Can spellcasters bring it back? Let's find out.
party. We are on Merrick versus Spellcaster's Judgment. And we're on round three. Did I say Judgment? I meant Command. Judgment's the one we don't want. Eric's going to start off with Drill Lago, which cannot punch past Summoner Monk. Skilled Dark Magician is going to hit the field, so his Magical Exemplar. Getting in for a little bit of damage. Merrick deciding to use uh, Gravekeeper's Commandant to inflict a little bit of damage instead of getting Necro Valley, but there is a Nightmare Steel Cage. Mako is going to be sacrificed to destroy Skull Invitation. Not sure if really worth, but I guess we'll find out. Maybe the AI is playing a game that I simply do not understand. Spellcasters Unite, Book of Moon. Brutal. That's that's losing an entire round of attacks. Oh, never mind. It didn't resolve properly, so it, it gets to go through. Gravekeeper Spy is going to pull out another spy. Last Magician is going to destroy a spy. You have to choose between Camiel and Merrick as a partner. Who do you go with? Now when you say partner, in what in what definition do you mean? Do you mean like a dueling partner? Legendary Fiend is going to keep getting stronger. Old 
vindictive magician is gonna get summoned out. Legendary Fiend is going to destroy. Old Vindictive Magician is going to get rid of Legendary Fiend. Gilgarth summoned to the field is going to punch out the Old Vindictive. Mist Body is going to be equipped on the Skilled Dark Magician. Can no longer be destroyed by battle. Can the Merrick deck adapt? Oh, were you, were you asking not as a dueling partner, Flaming Ruby? Were you asking if I if I had to ship myself with either Camula or Merrick, who would I pick? Merrick is going to take this round. All right, we're almost at the end of round two. Warrior Strike versus Machina Mayhem is up next. Uh, well, Camula kind of automatically gets disqualified because she is dead and Merrick is at least a living, breathing person. I do not really have a thing for vampires. So unless, like, Camula is just like a hee hee ha ha fun vampire where she calls herself a vampire and isn't an actual vampire it's a bit closer I guess but I think she's just actually undead so uh, she's automatically disqualified in my book and I would just choose Merrick Ah, I mean, Camilla doesn't, doesn't really do it for me. Uh, funny as it would be to be around evil Merrick. Uh, I would, I would kind of have to pick good Merrick because, uh, like... Evil Merrick would just kind of kill everyone I like around me. So, I'd, I'd probably go for good Merrick. Like, Camula nor Merrick are neither of my choices, but if, like, the fate of the world depended on me shipping with either Camula or Merrick, I would pick good Merrick, so... <laughs> Warriors right now have the edge, but Machina Mayhem has pulled out the Swords of Revealing Light.
Uh, we're gonna get a random compulsory. I'm not really sure it's gonna help a whole lot, but we'll see. Could be wrong. Double summon. Samurai going to get sun. Red gadget gonna get pulled out, but it looks like machines really have no chance right now against what's on the field. Blazewing Butterfly is going to stay in defense in case there's a mirror for it sitting there. Blazing Butterfly going to attack into the Cyber Valley and end the battle phase immediately. Armored Cybern going to be destroyed, Heavy Mech Support Platform going to be destroyed, and Red Gadget going to be destroyed. But the Machina Armored Unit will get an 1800 Defender out. The rollout is going to be used to equip a Heavy Mech Support Platform to further ensure its survival, though granted Future Samurai- Oh, what are you doing? You're gonna walk right into a Sakuretsu and then die. Not from the Sakuretsu, but from losing your equip. Machina Armored Unit calls out Commander Covington, who's just probably sitting there shaking their head. Scrap Recycler hits the field, throws Big Saturn into the grave. Yeah, you probably don't want to draw that in a situation like this. It is looking pretty grim for Machina Mayhem right now. Mocking a Peacekeeper hits the field. He is not going to keep the peace and is going to get run over. They're going to get Mocking a Gear Frame. Can Destruction is going to be played. Did they... I didn't catch that they pitched their... their Machina. Machina have only 200 life points left. Fortress is gonna hit the field, but this is still Warriors game. Machina Fortress takes DD Warrior from the hand. Evocator Chevalier comes back. It's an attack! And Warrior Strike takes round one.
Alright, here we go. Can Makita Mayhem spin it back? Gemini Soldier going to be summoned. And because it battled, it summons out Evocator Chevalier. Compulsory is going to be used on Chevalier, not the strongest of hits. Nightmare Seal of Cage is going to be used in Retaliation. Hidden Armory is going to be played to get Big Bang Shot. Big Bang Shot is going to get equipped to Evocator Chevalier. Gemini Soldier will battle so it can special summon out Dark Valkyria. Or they sent Blastphere to the grave in favor of Red Gadget, huh? It's gonna run right into Sakuretsu. Uh, this this may be it for machines here. Good old card trooper. That's going to be two for Warrior Strike. Zero for Machina Mayhem. So that's the end of round two. And right now, Dark Emperor and Dragoon of the Legion are the only two that are still undefeated. Will that change going into this round? Dark Emperor, here we go. I've been playing Master Duel of the Cosmo actually. I'm actually unfamiliar with them, otherwise I'd give you some suggestions for at least things to look into. on DD Survivor right at the start. That better be a valuable card. It's gonna be a crash. And a premature burial. Macro Cosmos in play. There goes a Shining Angel.
Golden Homunculus is here at 2700, 2700. Uh, that is gonna be a win for Dark Emperor already. Dark Emperor's streak is on the line. Can it keep it? Versus. Surge of Radiance. Surge of Radiance going to hit in with Shining Angel. Shining Angel is going to get Dark Cord. Gelin Duo is also going to get removed from play from DD Word. Don't kill us that 2400. Surge of Radiance is down to their last 1,000. They're gonna need to pull one hell of a card to survive. And they eat a Sakura too. G 
Youch. That's gonna be Curse of... Or sorry, not Curse. That's gonna be Dark Emperor taking the win. Their streak remains. Next is going to be Rise of the Dragon Lords versus Zombie World. Dragon Lord starting off with Mausoleum, as they love to do. Guilford the Lightning. Also a Dragon Lord, I swear. Hits the field. Zombie World plays. Red Eye Zombie Dragon hits the field. Does they do they have anything for Guilford? They're gonna summon back the Mass Dragon. It's really just gonna give the Dragon Lords more fodder. Oh, they had nothing to defend Zombie Dragon. And hey, look at that, you have another dragon. is going to get revived. Don't worry guys, Dark Blaze Dragon is back. Still with 1200 attack. Soul Taker is going to be used on Guilford the Lightning. Mystic Walk is going to be chained.
Zombies are low on life points. What can they do? There's Snipe Hunter. And even though the effect fails, because of... Oh my god. Because of Spear Reaper's own effect, just the thought of being targeted kills it immediately. And Snipe Hunter and friends attack and win. Dragon's Lord takes round one. Zombie world. Yeah, these are out of the box. Uh, so far, probably expectedly, um, Dark Emperor is winning right now 3 0. Dragon Lords is gonna drop a Horus level 6 onto the field, immune to spells but not traps. Horus is out of here. Oh, and Spear Reaper is gonna get in and start chipping away at that hand. Sends the brain control, which is pretty bad. Flame Ruler appears on the field. Generating Mummy is going to come in and hit it. Spirit Reaper is going to take away more of that hand. Uh, that'll be Decoy Dragon this time. Paladin of Curse Dragon is going to hit. Did Dragons draw? Oh, well, they draw a card to stick around a little bit longer. Red Eyes Zombie Dragon hits the field. Twin Headed Behemoth. Never mind, I was wrong. I thought they had like two mass dragons to use, but they went with the Behemoth. going to bring it to round three.
Yeah, it is it is really silly. It's just but like zombie red eyes is so much easier to pull out. Like if you draw a pyramid turtle, you practically draw a red eye zombie dragon. A malevolent mech Goku. Ooh, that's a dirty move. It's going to get destroyed and inflict 24 dam 2400 damage to Dragon Lords. Dragon Lords is going to attack. It is Mass Dragon, so they are going to get Decoy Dragon. Plague Wolf is going to go into 2,000 attack. He's going to try and punch over Kaiser Seahorse. Does. Plague Wolf is going to blow up at the end of the turn. Decoy Dragon is going to be tributed for Horus. No traps this time on entering the field. Yugi would be very proud of that move. Snipe Hunter fails the roll. Woboku is going to stop the destruction of Zombie Master with its zero defense. Zombie Master is going to pull a Plague Wolf from the grave. And they're going to go on the attack. Turtle is going to ram into Horus. They'll take a lot of damage. But they will call another turtle to ram for another 1100 damage. To call Ryukoki, I don't know why we rammed two turtles for that, but the AI is beyond my comprehension. And it didn't matter anyway, zombies were left with an entirely open field on the next round. Zombies will take this round from Rise of the Dragon Lords. Next it's going to be Curse of Darkness versus Spellcaster's Command. Exemplar starting off with two equips. That is a very powerful exemplar over there. Have a good night. Sleep well. Mystic Tomato summons out Prometheus, who is going to get punched out immediately. And then Dimension Wall is going to be thrown against Dark Red Enchanter. I really would have saved it for the Mega Beat Stick exemplar, but you know, what do I know? The computer plays on another level. Never mind, they drew another Dimension Wall. 
They take 3,700 damage, even though they've been doing nothing but getting slammed. If only they had a third dimension wall, they, they could maybe win. Is that it? It is. Spellcasters take round one against Curse of Darkness. Curse of Darkness is kind of like the, the new wave blaze of destruction. It is like the meme deck of the structure deck series so far. But maybe it can do what Machine Revolt could not, and despite being the worst deck here, get a win. Actually, I don't even really think that Machine Revolt was the worst deck. I just don't think the AI knew how to even strategize with it. Swords of Revealing Light is going to be thrown on the field. Spellcasters have no monster and they've lost 2,000 life points. Pitch Black Power Stone is active and it's going to start feeding its power into the Citadel. Breaker is up. Breaker is going to blow up a back row. Breaker is going to do it again. Breaker is going to get equipped and become Giga Breaker. Apprentice Magician is out to hand out more batteries. Swords of Revealing Light breaks. Field Barrier is going to be used. Prometheus destroyed. Apprentice Magician will punch in for 400. Plague Wolf is going to get summoned out to punch out the Apprentice Magician. And Old Vindictive is going to be, be grabbed. Ecto Plasmer, not the smartest move in this situation when you desperately need all the life points you can get, but... An Ectoplasma is used against Curse of Darkness. That's going to give Spellcaster's commands two wins. Next up is Warrior Strike versus Dragoonity Legion. Whoops.
Samurai is going to get pulled with reinforcement of the army. Evocator Chevalier is going to be supervised immediately. Dragon Ravine also hitting the field early, the one and only copy in the deck. Gotta pitch that twin-headed behemoth. Hunter Owl is sent to the field. Mage Power is going to make that a very scary owl. Supervise will revive the Evocator Chevalier. He's gonna get summoned a second time, but has no effect to use with it. Very unfortunate. But Gemini Trap Hole will save it. Card Trooper will mill three. Monster was milled. The 1900 damage is achieved. Valley Falcon is putting in work, but Ibikyo Drachmord is going to paralyze it, but it's going to be treated for Armed Dragon level 5. Field Commander Raz is going to get chomped up by a dragon. Gonna be Dragoonity's taken round one. Here we go, round two. Can warriors bring it back or will the communities keep holding on?
card trooper dips some cards in the grave, gets a free hit on an open field. Dragoonity Javelin comes in to put a stop to it. Sending Leviton to the grave. Do you have any way to bring it back out, though? Are Dragoonities just going to lose to Gemini Summoner Beatdown? No. The Matchless General is here. And so is Armed Dragon Level 5. And there is the difference between 6 feet and 5'11. Spear Dragon going in. Monster is going to swap out Armed Dragon for a Kamakiri that's not being attacked. You're gonna tribute for you. Warrior Strike is going to steal Leviton. Dragoonity's boss monster now works for the enemy! That'll make it our round three hype! Get a hidden armory for Big Bang Shot.
Hunter Owl hits the field. Spell Striker is destroyed. It did bring us the the Shadow Realm. Which in its own way is a bit more horrifying than like death. Yes, that is the uh, the Phoenix Gear Freak deck is playing today. Miss Pilus pulls from the deck. Mavison hits the field. Grand's stock will be equipped. That is going to be a double attacking Mavison. And that's going to be Dragoonities. Taking the round. Next up is going to be Machina Mayhem versus Merrick. remains undefeated. Gadget strikes a wide open field.
Prohibition being used on creature swap. Absolutely do not want that card getting played again. Mind control can also be broken by just being Joey and having good enough friends. has quite the board here. Cyber Valley is a good pull for machines. I don't know if they have an out for this. Acid trap hole.
Okay. How is it cool? lightning quick. I thought Bastion dueled in society like once. Gonna be a win for Machina Mayhem. Tiebreaker round.
Gravekeeper starting off running into the brick wall that is Armored Cyber. Machina Sniper arrives and deals with the Gravekeeper Assailant. That's a whole lot of back row that Merrick has set down. Green Gadget hits the field. for the big Saturn. GX Season 2 did a lot of funky things. Heavy mech support equips to the big Saturn. It's going to change Cybern into attack mode. Hit for 2,000. Midoriya is going to crash into the big Saturn. Big Saturn's effect happens. They both take 2,800 damage. Honestly, the graduation duel between Zane and uh, Jaden was probably one of my favorite duels in GX. As far as what I liked least, uh, even though I liked Supreme King, I disliked how he got to being Supreme King. Like, I don't... It still didn't feel right that he was willing to throw all his friends away to try and find Jesse. Like, you figure after he started losing them, he'd be like, oh, maybe I should change what I'm doing. Yeah, he just kind of... And uh, Merrick takes it. So, at the very end of round three, Dark Emperor and Dragoon Vs are undefeated at 3 0. Merrick and Spellcaster's Command are tied for the next spot at two wins apiece. And then Curse of Darkness is 0 and 3, go figure. Um, I actually have to call it early for today. I apologize. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to pick this up and finish streaming this later. But yeah, I need to I need to peace out for now. Unfortunately. But I will be at the premiere tomorrow, and then I'll probably try and finish streaming this. We've got like six more rounds to go through. But I will see you guys around. Thanks for chilling and hanging out. It was fun, as always.
yeah, hope to see some of you guys at the premiere tomorrow. Uh, if you haven't joined it, I have a Discord. Uh, so feel free to pop in on that if you haven't. I'll catch y'all later. Bye-bye.